This is the Derawan Archipelago, tucked away off the east coast of Kalimantan on the island of Borneo. It's where we've been for the last couple of episodes. This video was filmed at Maratua Atoll, part of the Derawan Archipelago, and possibly the jewel in its crown. You'd be forgiven for having never heard of this group of islands, least of all visiting them. They are difficult and time-consuming to travel to. Too off the beaten track for social media influencers, glossy travel blogs or most holidaymakers, they don't get the big bucks or publicity of similar places like the Maldives or the Caribbean. And yet this archipelago is one of the most sensational we've ever sailed to. The arduous journey to get here was worth it for the most beautiful sights on land, sea and underwater you'll find anywhere in the world. No private islands or luxury resorts here. In Derawan, it's rustic chalets built under the trees on the seashore, tasty home cooking, bintang beer, locally grown pineapples, papayas, coconuts and mangoes, sand between your toes and no reason to dress up because all you ever need is beach clothes and flip-flops. Of course it has the obligatory turquoise water and white sand beaches fringed by palm trees and there are miles and miles of those beaches, great for beachcombing or just sitting looking out to sea. The beaches are also the home and workplace for many local people mostly fishing families, eager to chat and take a selfie with you to show to their friends. There is no menace here, just smiles and a warm welcome. And look where we are. We are back on the dive boat. As we said, we're going diving today. Um, we're about to go to the Hanging Gardens. That's our first spot. The Derawan Archipelago is part of the Coral Triangle, home to the highest coral diversity in the world. It has 605 coral species, compared to the Caribbean with just 61, and even the Great Barrier Reef with a mere 500. Maratua Atoll is encircled by a shallow reef, suitable for snorkelling as well as diving. At its edge you tilt over onto a wall which drops off into infinity beneath you. Colourful hard and soft corals shoot out from the side as far as you can see. Turtles and other large pelagics cruise by and reef fish swarm through the coral and sponge gardens. The water clarity is superb and gave Jamie the opportunity to take some great shots, not only of familiar critters, but of new macro subjects, including this majestic candy crab.
and into a bit of a drift dive a, a, a fast drift dive at that uh, good fun really good fun uh, saw a turtle on the way down saw a turtle at the end uh, another candy crab and uh, in fact two candy crabs together quite difficult to photograph though because towards the end well I don't know how fast that current was it was probably a good three knots or so so um, you know too quick to be doing any still photography <laughs> unless you pin yourself to a seabed but uh, just fabulous fabulous visibility Elizabeth yes the visibility was spectacular and uh, so we started off quite gently but towards the end we were going really fast and I started going up I couldn't get rid of my air so I held hands with our dive master's assistant and we just did our three at five and we rocketed along and went up and it was fine it was, and I don't know so much to see did you see that great big bump head eating he was fabulous and uh, he pointed him out and um, yeah the turtle was lying next to the turtle this is nice Very much, Cassidy Skipper. <laughs> uh, so, for those who don't know, in between your dives, you need to surface for at least an hour, depending on how deep you've gone. But on average, for these kind of dives, which is approximately 20 meters we spent most of the time at about 20 meters on that dive so when you come up um, you need to decompress uh, allow all that gas to uh, escape through your bloodstream and that takes at least an hour for that to happen so what better place than to spend our hours rest on this desolate beach eh? beautiful all right back at the ranch after our second dive as you can see and uh, all I can say is pygmy seahorse. To anyone who is familiar with diving and creatures of the sea, I think I'm right in saying that the pygmy seahorse has only recently been identified and uh, I never honestly thought I would ever see a pygmy seahorse but uh, sure enough uh, we spotted one. I say we, of course, uh, it was Ammon that spotted it and he, he kind of knew where to look but a pygmy seahorse is that big and he's the same color as the coral of course but uh, unfortunately I found that uh, when we went down my flash wasn't working and it seems as if I pinched one of the o-rings and I flooded my flash gun and that happened just before we saw the pygmy seahorse fortunately I have my video lights and fortunately I do have a second uh, flash so a, a strobe so that's okay but anyway that was an amazing dive. These two dives this morning have just been incredible. Cannot recommend this place enough. I just wanted to show you though, when we when we surfaced, look at the state of the sea. It's uh, really picked up. It's picked up in the last hour or so. We had a bit of a squall come through earlier while we were underwater. I just went down to offer my services to help out it looks a bit rocky down there, but um, uh, Raman, who's the uh, assistant that came with us, insisted just go up to the restaurant, have a coffee. We cannot do anything to help. We are so well looked after here, they will not let us lift a finger. As an advanced diver, of course you're supposed to prepare all your own equipment, but uh, even that, I, cannot, I can't touch anything, because as soon as we do, they come over, they take our bags, they sort our equipment out. It looks like they're just now finishing unloading the boat after our two morning dives. And now they've got to get new cans on, that's new cylinders on, for our afternoon dive. But uh, hopefully the sea will have calmed down a bit after we have our lunch. Time to relax. So this whole day I have tried to help oh, these guys on and off the boat <laughs> yeah. 
and um, we can we can't lift a finger they insist on doing everything and we've now finished our third dive we've taken the little mopeds back and uh, they've even carried our gear down to the dinghy and they've even retrieved our dinghy for us i mean this is just amazing service these guys are they are beautiful people we love them well it's time to say goodbye to Maratua. Uh, not completely, we are leaving but we're actually today going back across the atoll and we're going to be anchoring back at the first spot we anchored in on the first night. And that is because there's a very shallow patch and uh, the timing isn't quite right to leave now and head down to Tolly Tolly. Uh, bearing in mind we've got that big uh, channel to get through so we're just going to re-anchor but uh, it's been a fabulous stay here we've thoroughly enjoyed it and look at it now it's just so blue and gorgeous as liz says why are we leaving why are we leaving so we're just going across the lagoon we've practically got back to where we were anchored before and the shallowest depth was three meters keeping a very careful eye on the depth sounder and looking out over the side. I can actually make out the individual rocks below us. It's quite disconcerting. But we're heading back to the first place that we anchored when we arrived here. Uh, and we'll wait out the rest of the day and go tomorrow. So we followed song lines most of the way because they, we think, had a better route over initially. And it did seem a little better, but it's still pretty shallow. <laughs> We appreciate that many places we visit are difficult to get to by any other means than boat. But if you are planning your next holiday and you fancy desolate beaches, stunning underwater vistas and the warmest of welcomes, then you might consider putting the Derawan Archipelago on your wish list. We promise you won't be disappointed. So my anchoring expert selected a very good spot and unusually, for the first time in a long time, we can actually see the anchor in about eight metres of water. And it's on a sandy patch. Uh, we are quite close to Songline 3. I have radio through and checked that they're okay with that. Uh, but we're only staying here one night. And unfortunately, the, the sandy patch kind of stops after there and it's all rock. When we, when we anchored here last time, uh, Songlines were complaining about uh, the sound of their chain and anchor grinding against rock. So we wanted to avoid that. So anyway, it's midday and uh, Sunday and we are, uh, no, Monday. And we'll be going off early morning. So it's just one night. <laughs> 